Hi, everyone. I am so incredibly excited because I am speaking again with author Natalie Banks about her brand new book called The Canary Song. And she has that book. She's going to hold it up so we can see it. So ex uh, it means so much more to me, that picture, now that I've read the book. I mean, it's beautiful, but I find with your books, after I'm done reading them, I go back and look at the cover and I get a whole new experience of it. And I am so happy we're talking again. Yes, me too. Thanks so much. I just watched our interview that we did back in, <laughs> I don't even know when we did it, not too long ago. And I think it was April. I don't know. But Oh no, it's a yeah, end of April, beginning of May. And I was so annoyed by how many times I told you how much I loved you. <laughs> I was like, I oh my you. God, people have to listen to me like say that over and over again. How annoying. You you can say that as much as you want. <laughs> Oh, I was, you know, when I was doing the, all the prep work and I kept thinking, you know, about this book and I was like, how do I want to sum this up? And all I can say is that I truly believe that you have a gift from God on storytelling. I mean, mm -hmm. seriously, this book meant so much to me. And it's kind of interesting to me is when I'm given books and what's going on in my life and the messages that I get from them. Oh, and wow. This book look was like dead on and I just was like, oh my God, Natalie, that is, it's truly like, I feel like you get it given to you like in, a, in some kind of hard drive into your brain and then all you do is sit down and write it out. Thank you. You gave me goosebumps. Oh. So let's just all take a moment because we both know what the book's about, but I'm going to tell everybody kind of a little, you know, we don't do giveaways and you and I know that, but this story is Juliet story is how I see it, but it does come from two different perspectives, Juliet and her husband, Liam. Mm -hmm. And it just, I've been married. I've been married twice. Okay. And I, the way you touched in, cause I know you have not gone through a divorce or anything like that. And in the beginning of the book, I kept thinking about that, Natalie. I'm like, how does she know? How does she know those feelings? How does she know? How did you tap into that feeling of separation when you're still living with the person and you know what you're going through in your head I felt like I was with Juliet I understood everything you were saying of course I was you know pleasantly surprised by Liam's thoughts and I was like hmm, okay so he has thoughts too <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna let you tell us like how this story came to you well, you know, I've always kind of been enamored with survival stories. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as from reading the book, it's survival on many levels. Right. You know, she's had to survive a lot of things in her life. And I just kind of put it together in that way, thinking about all the different things that we go through as women. And, you know, a lot of stories are all about, you know, how other people save us or a man has to save us. And. I thought it was important, you know, that we have a different perspective of Juliet saving herself. Yeah. So that's kind of where I went from there. And then the idea started coming in, you know, about what she could have gone through to put her to the limits already emotionally. Yeah. So, ah. <laughs> yeah like, a, like I wanted her to have a true metamorphosis. Right. Right. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> And I'm going to read to you. I mean, I wrote down and I was reading it on my Kindle. I kept snapshotting it, writing down things. And <laughs> and um, this is not a giveaway. It is later in the book, but I just thought that it summed it up so brilliantly. And so I just wanted to share with everybody what I loved. And, and, it, and it brought me to tears. It really did. It just brought me to tears. And uh, you say, now even here, I have been waiting for someone to save me, not ever realizing the one I was waiting for all this time was me. I was the only one that could save me, truly save me. And I just got tears because, you know, we're always going through stuff as women. And at this stage in my life, it isn't just about the men saving me, but my children. Like as they get older, I look to them and then I look, you know, I keep looking outside and, and I, when I I read that I was like oh I didn't even realize I was doing that and I just want to thank you for that gift because I didn't realize I was doing it you know well you're welcome I mean I think we all do it in some ways you know I think a part of it's human nature we look to others to fix things yes you know help us get through stuff and we don't realize that the strength is all within 
Yeah. And it's almost like not only do we look to them, but then we kind of blame them. And she was kind of blaming, you know, she was, I mean, you know, initially she was putting the blame out there. Like this was my fault, but it wasn't my fault. And this was, you know, and, and so she kept looking to someone to blame her problems on. And Mm -hmm. until she came to realize that she couldn't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's what I got. (laughs) Oh, I'm so glad it meant more to you than just enjoying the story. Oh, I I think it's going to mean some, I think that everyone is going to find something in this story for them. And when I rewatched our video about the dark room, I was, I said the exact same thing. Well, that's one of, one of my goals in writing. I did the same thing in the water is wide. Yes. I love, I love to help people and I love to tell stories. So I think, you know, I try to tell stories that will touch people's lives in more than one way and ah. weave a little bit of encouragement into my stories. So as the character grows and heals, they can grow and heal with the character. Absolutely. This story is not going to leave me anytime soon. It really Aww. isn't. I'm going to carry it with me because like I said, I truly like, I feel like some books are just like given to me, like read this now. And, mm-hmm. and I feel like everybody, like I said, I think they're all going to come up with their own, um, you know, take from Juliet. First of all, I love the way you spelled Juliet. I you love do. that. I do. Uh-huh. I do. Thank you. And um, and she has twins. And I wanted to know where you found the name. She's got fraternal twins, a boy and a girl. And you called him Jacko and yeah. Janie. And I was like, that is such a cute nickname. Like, that was his nickname, right? Yeah. Yeah. I d- it just came to me when I was kind of thinking about the story. Like, mm-hmm. his name came to me before Janie's did. And I'm just like, I know that's his name. I feel like maybe it's part of the download. <laughs> yeah, I, I do believe that. And you know, what was interesting is when I watched our video and we talked about this book and you were in, you know, you were still writing it and you were telling me how it was like one of your favorite books to write and, you know, how connected you felt to it. And, and then after reading it and then I was like, I can see why you, I mean, you know, during the whole, I'm not going to tell any spoilers here, but as the story unfolds, like I can only imagine what you went through as a writer, as it's coming to you. And I feel like it was, and and you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I really felt like that's how it came to you. I feel it like unfolded to you as much as it unfolded to us. It it did. I felt like I was watching her story and telling it. (sighs) And isn't that, there's several times I cried as I watched her grow and certain things that she was able to accomplish when she was out there. Like I was just so proud of her. It's been an amazing experience. Yeah. I was so proud of her too. (laughs) I just have to tell you. And I was thinking about that moment, like, you know, in our life when we could just give up, you know, when we feel like every, like the pressure is just so difficult, no matter what it is, whether, you know, it's your marriage, your children, health, anything that it is. And you just could be like, I just want to lay down. And I kept waiting for her to do that. I thought she's just going to give up. Like she can't take anymore, you know? And then, and then, you know, she finds these things along the way, like signs. And that's where we get the Canary song, which was beautiful. Cause I kept waiting. I was like, okay, where is this going to come in? And then, ugh. Uh, I, <laughs> I have goosebumps again. <laughs> uh, I know, me too. This is too much. But I love that. So, okay, let's talk about that because that's not a spoiler at all, really. Um, the canary, I, I didn't, you like gave us a little bit of history about it. So do you mind sharing that as part of the, as part of talking about it beforehand? Well, it was kind of interesting because I knew the title of the book before I goes back to mm. the information coming from elsewhere, I guess. Yes. But I knew that I knew the title of the book before I knew how it was going to play in. I knew that it would be a sign of encouragement, mm-hmm. but I didn't know how much canaries were actually revered and respected spiritually for their symbolism and their hope. And I mean, I guess if you just look at them, their color yes. is amazing. And, um, you know, the, the folklore is if you see a canary that, you know, think things are beginning to change for you for the better, you know, that you're going through a metamorphosis. So I was just blown away. I'll be honest. I cried the day I read that because I was like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. I have to share it. And that's kind of why I went into the history of the canaries because I wanted the reader to know 
how and feel the way I felt when I read that and how significant it was for her and the canary. Yeah. And and the interesting thing was is I was at a, a cabin during when I was writing the canary song for a week and I had never seen a canary in the wild ever. And one of the days I was there, two yellow canaries came down. I was down by the water. They uh-huh. came and started flying around me and I went back up to the house and they followed me all the way back up to the house and landed in the tree outside of the house I was staying. Wow. And were singing. And I was just blown away because I'm like, wow, that is just a sign if I've ever seen one. No kid, I loved how she was looking for a sign too, because I was thinking sometimes I forget to do that. Sometimes I forget that there are angels out there that are so willing to just give you a sign of encouragement. Yes. And I actually had never seen a canary out in the wild either. And the other day I was walking and this is before I started reading the book and I saw one and I was like, oh. I never saw one out. My mom had canaries. Um, she used to, my mom was really into birds and she used to keep in a, in a, she kept parakeets and canaries and, and it was a thing when she was growing up, they always had birds. So, you know, she, we always had birds and my kids always tell me like how obsessed I am with birds because when I see them outside, I'm like, what do you think they're doing? And my son is like, why do you care what the bird is? Doing? I'm like, I don't oh, that's so cute. <laughs> I love that. Because I feel like they're so spiritual because when you watch birds like flying, I mean, anything they're doing, you're like, how did they know? How did they know? Like, you know, today was the day they were leaving because I'm up north. And when they start getting together to leave, I'm like, was there a memo? Like, today's the day. <laughs> you <know? laughs> oh, now you can see so why cute. my children think I'm crazy. But that's no, what I think about. It. You know? I love it. I think it's adorable. So I was like, when, so when I started reading this, I was like, that's interesting. It was the first time I ever saw one out in the wild. I don't even know if they, you know, what the chances are in Pennsylvania for that to happen. I don't even know, but you know, I don't either, but it was pretty significant because they're beautiful and they stand out, you they know do. it, you know, I think that's another reason why they, they have a symbol, symbol, symbol is <laughs> Yes. They have symbolism. I can write. I can't talk. Yes. They have symbolism to give you hope because they get your attention. They do. You know, I mean, when you see one, you're like, wow. I mean, it stops you on a dime. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'm happy I love... for you that you saw one. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, that's why I just love the title of this book. It is so fitting. So, so fitting. And, um, okay. So, before I let you go, I got to find like, what is next? Okay. Cause I'm dying. Over here. I'm like, Oh my God, I can't imagine what you, every book is getting so much better. Like I loved it. And then it's like, no, I loved it. And I watched the last one. I'm like, but I told you 50 times how much I loved that one. And I'm like, Oh my God. And this one, like, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> well, the one I'm working on right now is a secret. Okay. All I don't right. want to give anything away yet. It's, um, I think you're going to like it though. It's a lot different than the other three, but that's, I think that's how I roll. <laughs> I, you know what? I just, I'm so happy for you. I am so happy that you found this gift and that you're giving this to us. I mean, you know, we talked about the last time about, you know, how many children we have and, and you get to a certain place and you're like, what do I have left? And you've got this significant gift and I am so happy that I'm a part of it and that I get to tell everybody about it and share your books because, and, and if, if people don't believe me, they can go on Amazon because you have like, you will already have so many reviews and they are all five stars and I have never seen that before. And I was I, it's, I teared up today. I'm like, I am so happy for her. I just, I want to come down to North Carolina and give you a hug. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm waiting. You come on. <laughs> oh, I told you before how much I love North Carolina. So that may happen, but you know, I am just so, so happy for you. I can't wait to see what this book does. I can't wait for, you know, more people to read it and to get to tell you, are you having any book signings coming up around you? 
<laughs> I'm going to actually, I'm going to be at Holden Beach at the Katie Morris Art Gallery on Friday for the release. Yeah. And then on August 25th, I'll be at the Barnes & Noble in Wilmington <gasps> signing there. I'm super excited about that. That is really exciting. That is so exciting. Well, everyone, when, uh, when you see this video, this book will be out in paperback and on Kindle. And I'm going to have Natalie's links listed so you can hit that one button. Go there and buy it and please leave her review because her reviews are coming in fast and they are amazing. And I am so, so thrilled. And you know where to find me for the next one. Oh, I definitely will. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you too. And you have a great day, Natalie. Okay. You too. Okay. Bye-bye. All right, everyone. If you made it this far, thank you. I really, really tried not to tell her a million times how much I loved it, but seriously, it was difficult. Okay. You have to get this book. All right. I love her so much. And my phone went off. I love her so much as a person, as a writer. I will always be her biggest fan. So go get it. All her links are listed below. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you, everyone, for watching.